welcome to WTF episode number 10. I am here today with Tom Tran, and we are going to be going over uh, ways that digital marketing agencies and, and just companies in general can use uh, database reactivation as part of their marketing strategy. Uh, we're basically going to figure out you know, what it is, why you would want to use it, and actually how you can implement that in your business to get a quick win, you know, basically today. Um, so without any further ado, um, Tom is, is much more advanced in this, um, category. So I'm going to kind of defer to you on this one, Tom, and this is kind of like an educational lesson for me. Um, so let's kind of hop into it, Tom. So can you kind of define for us, what is domain, uh, database reactivation? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just an acronym that is, or a, a concept, um, in our industry that we use that, I mean, is commonplace, but in other words, uh, database reactivation is basically just reaching out to your existing customers or past customers or even leads, right? So the importance of um, having a list or a community to reach out to is the crux of this one strategy, right? Um, one of the main reasons and benefits of doing that and reaching out to your past customers or past leads is uh, they already have some form of no like, and trust with you and your brand. So they're the lowest hanging fruit. Oftentimes, if you really unpack why we run ads or we do any type of marketing, it's to generate new business, right? So um, then that's one way to basically generate more income for your company is to um, run marketing and advertising campaigns. But then you think about the other end of that, right? Who are you running it to? If you're running it to existing customers and to new customers, then you may be overspending to get that message out to existing customers if you already have them in your contact or your database, right? So in other words, database reactivation is just, hey, with the contact information that you have for people that already have had interaction with your business, um, reach out to them first, just use a different medium. And oftentimes the two mediums that we use for that are either going to be um, email or a text message slash SMS marketing, right? Okay, so that, that's great. Already, I'm, I'm a little bit, I uh, kind of learned something. When I hear the term database reactivation, obviously, mm -hmm there's two components. There's your database of old leads and sales. Mm -hmm. uh, and then reactivation implies you haven't really been touching out to them that much. You're going to hit them with like either a new offer or a new sale or just kind of touch base with them. Right. In my head, I always think that it's only your old customers that you reach out to, but it's actually your old leads that you haven't been following up with. But generally, like these are all people who've like put their hand up, said, I am interested in your service. I am in your target demo. I am in your audience. And then for whatever reason, you couldn't convert them six months ago, two years ago, or whatever the time distance is, 18 months ago, I guess. Uh, and, and that's how you kind of approach it. Yeah. Um, I think depending upon the sales course. cycle, right? As you were saying too, um, sometimes it's it's not the right time or the right circumstance for that person that opted in and said, hey, I'm interested. It just may not be a now, right? It just might not be right now, right away. And that's one thing that you and I both understand, right? Like the reason why Google ads are so effective is because we're, we're basically just focusing on the people that need that product or service right now. And oftentimes if you think about the entire marketplace of people that um, are prime candidate for that market or for that um, product or service, that's 2% of the market. So what about the other 98% of people that are just not now? That's the mm -hmm. importance of reaching out to them because you already captured their information, right? Yeah, like I, I know this is super popular in like the the fitness industry among others, mm -hmm. um, and it makes sense too. You know, like I always want to ditch the dad bod or get like something something abs in thirty days. Like that's always a thing. But just thinking of my own kind of mentality, there's certain times where I'm in that kind of algorithm myself, where I'm I'm thinking about it, and yeah, I really need to. Oh yeah, I you know like whatever my desired outcome is, there's, I go through cycles myself where this is more important to me or less important to me. So just because I didn't buy a few months ago, you're basically saying, okay, you didn't buy this, but will you buy this? And you're presenting them with kind of a, another solution to the same problem. Yeah, so, absolutely. Fortune is in the follow-up, right? It's just checking in. Hey, how are things? Have things changed? Do you still need, are you still looking for what I have to offer? Right. Mm -hmm. All right so like, as a as a business owner or, or even a marketing agency that wants to put this into other people's businesses, what are some of the uh, the benefits of using a DR campaign? It's cheaper than acquiring a new customer. 
you're yeah. not running any ads. So this the effectively the cost of being able to broadcast your message is going to be significantly lower. The audience that you're sending this message to is going to be significantly warmer because to some degree, they've already had some exposure to your brand because they've raised their hand and said, yeah, I'm interested in that offer, right? That previous offer that you sent to them. Um, and it's just something to where you can actually control, right? You have some leverage in controlling uh, how much revenue or how much more new business you could pick up because you have an audience that is confined um, that you can reach out to. And if that offer doesn't work, then you at least get a faster feedback loop to say, hey, it may not be the audience that doesn't, that that isn't say attuned to it, but it might be the ad or the, I'm sorry, the offer itself. So if you know that it, this is your audience, right? And the offer isn't working, change the offer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they've already kind of pre-qualified themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of one thing in my head, I always think DR, I think it's an SMS campaign. <laughs> but kind of what I'm hearing is it's also an email campaign. Yeah, absolutely. It's just another way. If you think about it just from the the the, the roots of just kind of like how the statement is, is kind of defined, right? Database reactivation. Mm -hmm. So it's an existing database of what? What kind of information do you have um, off uh, based of how, what type of info do you have from your customer or past lead? And in some places, right, it's NAP, meaning mm -hmm. the acronym for name, address, phone number. What address? Is it mailing address? Is it email address? Is it, right? And then also phone number. Are you calling them or are you sending a text message or are you sending a voicemail? How many different ways can you reach out to that person? It's based and dependent upon um, what type of, information you have to be able to contact that person on your database. So even, I mean, it's, it's interesting because we're both digital marketers, but direct mail isn't going anywhere. And I'm seeing a lot more digital marketers mm -hmm. sending direct mail. So it's just another way to get in front of your person, right? Yeah, it absolutely. Is. It's like whatever the herd is doing, I feel like a, a clever marketer is at least examining the opposite way, right? Yeah. People stop opening emails. All right, send them. Like people don't actually get mail anymore. So send them this. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you touched on the fact that it's definitely much more inexpensive to just use the leads you've already paid for. Like, you know, there, there's definitely a, a lot of people, customers included, will think that like you get your lead and it's a new lead for three to five days to, you know, 10 days. And then after that, oh, they're not interested. And they just kind of push them to the back. Of course, they're still interested. This is a great way to get them back into your buying cycle. One of the things you've mentioned to me before, though, uh, and, and we've kind of been through this a lot, like as an agency, one of the, the hardest hurdles that you have to get uh, get past is essentially uh, you've signed a customer, you've onboarded them, you really want to help their brand. But if you're doing like a paid, an, a paid ads campaign and it's like a lead generation campaign, no matter what you turn on, uh, it's going to take a few days for the leads to start coming in. Once the leads are coming in, they still have to book. After they book, they still have to pay. And if you're running an offer, oftentimes they don't make money on the first trip. They make it on the second trip. Mm -hmm. So DR kind of cuts into that because, you know, essentially you're lessening the time uh, from like they onboard with you till they get their first win, right? A customer needs a win to keep them interested. Can you kind of get into like, how that works and why DR is just perfect for getting customers quick wins. Yeah. I mean, if, if you think about it, like if you are a performance-based agency, which a lot of, a lot of marketers are at least are, you know, kind of started with, mm -hmm. um, what essentially does your customer want that local business want, right? They want more money and how do they get more money? They need more people to sign up for their product or their service, buying their product, buying their services. Right. So if that's the case, what's more valuable, a lead or a referral, or a customer, ultimately a customer exchanged money for that product or service. So the closer that you can get um, these people to that transaction, the more valuable you are as a marketer, but then also for the business, the more valuable the relationship is with you and your local business, right? If, if, that's, the, the, mm -hmm. if that's your customer, that, that relationship is. So if you think about the, that, that's really where the value is because for anybody that is a performance-based marketer that runs ads for people that, that generates leads for them, what's the most common or one of the most common objections that you get from a local business that has never run ads before, that isn't used to leads or used to referrals or they're used to, you know, just foot yeah, traffic? These, these are bad leads. These are terrible leads. Right. 
right? So if that's the case, right, then how can you offset that? Because you're not going to sit there. You may, you may have the time and they may have the wherewithal to be able to understand that they're newer to this game. Generating a lead is different than generating referral or generating, say, repeat business, right? Mm -hmm. But the closer you can get them to that pot of gold, which is more customers, more transactions, the more valuable your business is. Mm -hmm. So you're like automatically increasing their lifetime value of acquiring a new customer just because you have like a, a more thought out system. You can add in certain pitfalls like, you know, truthfully automated. So after their first cycle is done, you just decide to pick it up at any any given point and you just kind of work that lead more. There's nobody more likely to purchase from you than somebody who's already purchased. So like that's kind of built into it. And if I just think about myself, like say for certain gyms I've, I've joined in the past or say a dentist or, you know, a, a lot of different businesses that can use this just because I'm not purchasing from them now, you know, doesn't mean that I... I'm sick and tired of the organization. You know what I mean? Right. Like I, if I had a gym pass at one place for a year and then, you know, I just basically said, no, nah, it's, it's not working for me right now. That's because that's where my life was eight months ago. But maybe right now, if you hit me with the right offer out of the blue, as I'm thinking, ah, oh, you know, I got to get ready for this vacation or my knees hurt or, you know, whatever the focus is, bang, I'm right back in there. And yeah, I know how to get there. It's going to be easy. I know how it works. So like the whole onboarding sequence is super easy for that business. And it, and it really just, yeah, it, it's the super fast, super effective way to actually get people in the door. Yeah. And oh. you just think about it from examples, right? Specifically your example mm -hmm. of the gym. What about, I mean, if that gym ran an offer to you when you took your family to Japan for a month, would it, would it be, would it resonate? Would it be valuable to you? Of course not. Nope. But again, if you're doing something right, for example, where, you know, it required you to say, get in, get in shape again, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. New Year's resolutions time, which we all know, right? Yeah, those agree, resolutions yeah. tend to fizzle out by mid February, if not by March. So those types of campaigns make a lot of sense. It's almost like a win back campaign. But if you think about just reaching out, what different types of offers can you reach out for? Because some people that are listening to this may be in, um, you know, a service-based business where it's like transactional, a higher ticket transaction, like a realtor or a mortgage professional or a financial planner or an estate, a state um, and trust and uh, attorney, right? So, well, they're not going to want, like, they, we don't always get our wheels updated every six months, or we don't always mm -hmm. buy a new house every year, or we don't always refinance our house every six months, whatever that is, right? So think about the different ways in which you just want to stay in contact with them so that you're top of mind. Okay. It could be a birthday campaign. Hey, Kevin, just wanted to wish you a happy birthday from your team here at, you know, uh, ABC real estate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, trust in the state um, type of attorney. What we could, what we used to be able to do in the past with Facebook, which I'm, I'm sure their filtering is a little bit different now, was um, if someone had a new life event, whether there was a baby, whether they're engaged, whether they got a new home, think about that as another way for you to touch bases with them. Do you need to have a conversation to update your will and, and the state? Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. If you're in insurance or something like that. 100%. And all it is, is like, it's something that should be done already. But then if you have this kind of in, in a way where you can automate that stuff, leveraging technology, having this in your system to where it automatically reaches out to them just to check in, right? Think about it. You're top of mind. You're reaching so, out for goodwill, right? Yeah. Like I, I'm actually hearing that DR can actually be part of like your you can almost do it to existing customers that aren't even out of your buying cycle. Like in Why a way say they, that that birthday campaign is just something that I wouldn't have done. I would have been longer and longer between my contact points with this person, but just like the, the happy birthday, that's powerful, right? Cause if mm -hmm. nothing else, I almost feel like people don't even care that you said happy birthday, but they're impressed with the fact that you know, it's their birthday. That's right. Right. But they don't care that you said it, but the fact that the business is, you know, like, Nobody cares if if you know Ad Ronan says happy Thanksgiving on our you you know on our YouTube page or whatever. But what it does is it shows that we, you know, cross all the T's and dot all the I's. Like we've got everything covered by the time we have a birthday campaign that's up and, and generating. And it is another way to kind of build that connection, build that no like trust. That's I never really thought about that. That um, that's pretty interesting to me. How about jewelry stores, anniversary campaigns? Do you right? Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. you think about all the different ways and even with reputation, right? We understand that reviews are just basically no like and trust. And there's mm -hmm. oftentimes it's third party because you don't know the person that wrote that review, whether it was a glorifying positive review or a really nasty negative review, but those are important. So if you think mm -hmm. about it from that standpoint too, and from a customer experience, right? Not only are you taking proactive 
um, charge of say your reputation online, but a review campaign is going to be mm -hmm. something that is another database reactivation strategy or tactic. And another one on top of that is a referral campaign. We mm -hmm. know you like know, like, and trust us, but then does any of your friends and family need this or want that? And if you kind of take it down to more of like the frequently transactional type of businesses, higher volume, lower ticket, like restaurants or bars and things of that nature, think about all the times when you have like, say, the happy hour Tuesdays, where it's buy one appetizer, get the second one um, half off or vice versa, right? Or one beer. You don't ever go to a happy hour by yourself, get one appetizer and then just leave. So for the days and the nights in which your business is slow, why don't you just send out a broadcast, a database reactivation campaign? to your list to kind of to drum up more business for those days or nights that where you're, where you're slow right yeah okay so maybe i've just kind of limited myself in the past and reactivation to me just means like okay these people are out and they're not working but we're kind of using it as just like working our database That's essentially it. and it mm -hmm. works to to call it reactivation really works at the beginning right like if you onboard a new client but then after that it's just a process that's going to continue mm -hmm. Uh, one of the real takeaways that I'm taking there is that seasonality is kind of a big thing. Huge. You know, depending on the industry, depending on what it is. Um, yeah, you know what? Like if you get a text message, you know, over the holidays and somebody's just like, hey, happy holidays, thinking of you. Hope you guys do great. If it doesn't sound fake and you're not trying to sell, that's just one of those things that somebody will be like, oh, yeah, these guys are pretty cool. I like that. On top, you know, I want to yeah. kind of chime in on that, right? So oftentimes when I have conversations with other business owners, right, that are in the service-based business and I ask them, hey, are you reaching out to your past um, clients and customers, right? Are you doing any type of, say, database marketing, if you will? And oftentimes if it's not a straight no and the answer is like kind of like a mediocre yes, then I'll ask them, what are you sending to them? How are you staying on top of, how are you staying top of mind? And oftentimes it's a very generic glorified newsletter that their corporate is sending off that has no value to where it's just like, hey, I'm getting a rep in because uh, it's a touch that my coach or my team or my manager or my lead is suggesting that I do because I need to stay top of mind. Think about that. Take it a little bit further. If you were on the receiving end of that, are people opening that email? Is there any value in that? With all the busy things that are happening in their life, how could you stay a little bit, how could you do a little bit better than the competition and stand out? So if you think about it from that standpoint, it could literally be an email or a text message, whatever medium you have, like you want to use, Hey, Kevin, just checking in. How are things? Hmm. Start a conversation. Start a warm conversation. Be human. People don't do business with businesses. They do business with people. And if this person has already transacted with you before, and you're not a transactional type of person, you're a relationship type of person, and your business is more relational driven, relationship driven, then take that time and effort. And you can automate a lot of this stuff just to start the conversation. It doesn't have to be used physically doing this. You can if you want to, but with where we are in the world with technology now, you don't need to physically be doing that. You can have a system do that on your behalf to where the people that do want to engage with, those are the ones you focus and you lean in on, right? This is cutting because like I'm looking at my daily schedule. I have 10 things on it and three mm -hmm. of them are reach out to this person, reach out to this person, reach out to this person. Like where I 100% not not quite database at that point it's almost like i have it a uh, campaign launched and i could reach out to them like two three days later just like hey how's it going but that could be automated and that is kind of you know a, a similar kind of method there i i want to say one other thing about that right oftentimes when people hear this in terms of automation uh the very first objection right or rebuttal is well it, it seems very bland and it's not personal i'm more personal right well, the whole reason why you want to integrate and utilize automation, right, with marketing systems, automation, even AI more and more in the mix now is to make sure that you free up your time from doing these manual tasks to be able to focus and give more of your focused attention in that relationship. If you have 100, say, people that you need to reach out to, are you going to physically take the time out to send all of these texts manually to see who is going to raise their hand and then engage with? Would you, wouldn't you rather have a system that does this on your behalf, knowing that you and your, like your company and your systems on your behalf are reaching out to these people and the people that do want to reach out to you at that time will, and those are the ones you focus on, right? Mm -hmm. Spend that time, make that phone call, but it's not going to be, too, it's not going to be a hundred text messages and a hundred physical phone calls. You don't have to do that. It doesn't make any sense. And you don't have the time for that, right? Yeah, I've tried doing that too. And when mm -hmm. I do that, I basically cap out at like four to five clients that are, that all keep me busy. 
maybe an agency can can make ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month, but at a certain point you just kind of run out of that before automation really makes sense and and just different touch points and, and just being strategic about it. You know, like one of the things that I definitely see after years of doing this is I keep sending the same email. You know, like if I'm sending the same email to every client at the same point along the way, why wouldn't that be automated? Or after I haven't talked to them for a certain number of, of days or weeks or months, like, why wouldn't I just be like that? Hey, thinking of you, you know, or, or whatever, right? Like just to kind of get it in there. Obviously, you want the face to face stuff and you want it to be really personal because honestly, we're in a, uh, you know, basically a personality driven industry, right? Like if people mm -hmm. vibe with you, they're going to stay with you. If they think they're getting value, they're going to stay with you. So DR is great for all of that stuff because it keeps those connections there. Uh, and it also gets you quick results, you know, for a, a great price because you've already paid for these people. Uh, one of the things that always kind of kept me from actually going all in on database reactivation is even though I've been in business for a long time, I don't really have a database. Like, mm -hmm. what does that what does that mean to you? Like, in, in what situation? Over the years, I've probably dealt with a hundred customers. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas I've I've seen a lot of things where they're like, do you have 5000 people in your database? So I don't even think that that applies. And I just kind of move on. What are the, what are like some of the things you should be looking for before going all in on this kind of strategy? Yeah, I mean, list building. If you don't have a database then work on it right in terms of building it. So if you take that, if you kind of just, uh, you know, unpack that a little bit more, mm -hmm. what are some things that you can do to generate or build your list? right? As a digital marketer like us, if we're providing value, could we essentially turn some of these strategies into um, repurpose this content into say a playbook for someone, whether it's a video series or an ebook. We talked about this on the last call when it comes to content marketing, right? Why are we doing this? Why are we showcasing this? If there are some, if you have a client that um, you have some wins for, if you created a case study, uh, uh, you know, around those wins, whether it's a campaign or a system or something you integrated, and then you basically put that in front of other potential customers like that business, right? Mm -hmm. You're Now you're giving yourself a, a mechanism to be able to share more value with other future potential customers right? in exchange for name, address, phone number, email address, mailing address, whatever it is, right? For us as a marketer. So then you're building more value that way. And again, we understand this, right? It's no like and trust. There's fortune in the follow-up. So just because they opt into something now doesn't mean they're going to become a, a customer right away. They may never become a customer. But unless we have opportunities out there to share more of what we're doing, uh, we're never building our audience. So I mean, I'm I'm also a, a culprit of that as well, right? Like so for me, I'm looking at what different ways can I start to build my audience and leverage um uh, a list building as well, because we can always have, generate and build a bigger list because that's really where the fortune is, right? It's your community, right? So true or false, DR is just remarketing. True. Using the all of the methods that are available to you and hitting people at different parts of their buying cycle and just basically staying in front of them. Yeah, I mean, think about the things that we just uncovered right now, right? I mean, mm -hmm. when it comes to remarketing, it's follow-up, but we talked about birthdays and, and, and not even like a transactional birthday. It could just be a birthday message, an anniversary. Um, it could be a promotion for something, right? A seasonal promotion for something. So it is more transactional. It could be um, a annual financial review. It could be a annual or biannual um, life and estate and will and trust and estate review, right? It could be an insurance review. This is stuff that you should be doing anyways to stay on top, of, stay top of mind. An equity review for mm -hmm. realtors. It could be a, hey, this next week's um, appetizer, buy one, BOGO promotion. It could mm -hmm. be all those things, right? Dude, you know what I'm thinking would be super effective just in my company would be like a, a DR campaign. Like I said, if I've had a hundred customers over the years, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had some, you know, I brought some really talented people on board in the last few months, like literally did just send out an email or send out an SMS like, Hey, I brought on these guys, you know, this is Carlo. This is the type of stuff that he makes. This is Nat. This is the type of stuff that he makes. If you have any kind of content that you think would really help your business, let me know because we got some all stars, you know, like just a, a message that easy, you know, and it's not salesy. It's just like, hey, this is awesome. You want some of this like that? That would be so easy to send. And yeah, 100 people aren't going to say yes, but five will. You don't need 100 people to. Right. Yeah. 
And it might just be a reminder that you're still in business because again, time and circumstances change it all. They may mm -hmm. not have been in the, the market for that service at the time, but they may be now or down the road or someone that they know, but that you won't know unless you stay in front of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Business cycle, it fluctuates heavy, right? Absolutely mm -hmm. heavy. In any given month, I'm the richest man you know and the poorest man you know. You know, exactly. <laughs> like, that, that swing is heavy and it is for a lot of different business owners. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I got an understanding now of basically like how you define it and um, basically what DR is. Now, if I want to actually put that into play in my own business, like what tools should I be using? What is it that you're using? Uh, and how do you set everything up? Yeah, so that's a great question. If you think about, say, go back to your database and what type of contact information do you have um, for, for your database, right? Mm -hmm. If you have name, do you have a mailing address? If you do, then there's direct mail. What type of direct mail can you send? Right. All the different types of direct mail you oh, can send. I wouldn't thought that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, email address. Then if you have their email address, you can email. You can get even geekier if you wanted to do some type of like, say, a, a digital ad campaign because you have email addresses. Mm -hmm. You can do lookalike audiences in that sense if we wanted to do that. That's more for us, right? In our, what's in our wheelhouse and then text messages or a phone number. If you have a mobile phone number, then you can send a text message. Um, if you have a landline, then you can't send a text message, but you could call. You could maybe consider doing a voicemail drop as well. Right. So those are some things that you can do in terms of like, it depends on say what contact information you have for your customers. And then it opens up to the different um, things that you can do to reach them based off of that. Um, so, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. If you yeah. have name, email, phone number, and you only have one campaign that you can run, you can only mm -hmm. use one medium. How mm -hmm. is it that you connect with people to, to tell them the new offer? Yeah, great question. I'd say, take it back to, I look at, okay, what's the lowest hanging fruit? What has the highest open rate? Right. Is does text message have a higher open rate than um email? Yes. Uh does do you pick up random phone number like phone calls from random phone numbers? Hell no. Do you even check your voicemail? Probably not. Huh? Right. Yeah. So if you think about it from the, the sense of lowest hanging fruit, what's going to get open first? SMS all the way. Right. But that mm -hmm. doesn't mean don't send an email. Send the email too. Right. Mm -hmm. You could try the voicemail drop if you want. Right. But not all carriers are doing that. We don't have to go down that road right now. But um, I would say. TLDR, right? SMS first, just to see if this they're interested or not. And the messaging is what's going to be the most important, right? If you mm -hmm. have a winning offer, utilize that offer. But the message basically should be very short, concise, identify who you are and what business you're from, because it's just compliance, right? But then mm -hmm. ask them, hey, this is Tom Tran with TNT Digital Marketing. They have to know about you because you, they opted in, they gave you their phone number, right? Yeah. And then you ask them about the offer. Like, we have this new offer. Would this be of interest to you? Frame it in the sense of where it's very concise, conversational, but then their reply back, it should just literally be a yes or no question, okay? Mm -hmm. And then make sure that, and again, just compliance-wise, right? Just make sure that you have um, you have language in there where they can opt out if they no longer want to communicate with you via SMS, okay? That's it, mm -hmm. right? Identify who you are, state the offer, frame it in a, a question in terms of where it's yes or no, give them a, a chance to opt out. And from there, the people that say yes are the ones that you're going to want to talk to. Right. So uh, essentially having a better offer is not only going to increase your reply rate, it's also going to keep more people on your list. Offer trumps all. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it looks like, right? It could be the best offer. It could be the the, the crappiest offer in the best like presented in the best way possible. It's not going to resonate. Right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a really crummy offer written, say, uh, with with a crayon on a scratch pad. If that mm -hmm. offer is better. Right. That offer is the one you go with. Doesn't matter how it's presented. Right. Offer trumps all. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Th yeah. That makes sense to me. So it is important that before you set it up and before you kind of blast something out to a full database of 100, 500, 10,000 people, you just have it actually dialed in and then you know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm a local gym, for example, and you make an, an awesome campaign for me that, that, gets people interested for sure. They want to come back. You know, they have two, 3,000 people in that. But say 500 people respond. Like, what is that gym supposed to do? Yeah. Right. So think about it from the capacity of you as business owner as well. One, what we're doing is we have to understand how big of a list that gym, for example, has. 
and what their basically capacity is. So for us as the marketer, or even you as the gym owner that's looking to fill up more um, walk-ins, right? And more appointments for people to um, ultimately sell them into some type of a membership. How many mm -hmm. appointments can you take on? Test the offer with the subset first and then see how many appointments that you get of people raising their hand. One, it's going to validate the offer. Two, it's going to, you'll be able to test to see how many, how many messages do I need to send out that then equates to a certain appointment. So don't, don't do yourself a disservice of blasting it to your entire database. One, it's not going to work because of the technical reasons, but then two, it's not going to work because it's going to give you, it's going to give you, it'll create another problem, a logistical nightmare, because you won't be able to facilitate all these appointments that you're generating for yourself. It's a good uh, problem to have, but it's still a problem. Okay. Like, yeah, that's actually interesting. So if I was to send it out to say like 10,000 people on a certain database, basically what you're saying is just figure out like how many people, if they reply, can we actually handle? 100%. So you start with a list of like 500 or or even 250 at first to see 250 zero replies okay the offer has to be better 250 if it's 250 and we get 100 replies yeah maybe this offer is too good or and if it is yeah the scale it hire some more people because it's you know it's about to start raining right huh okay um so if if i were to be setting this up in my own business mm -hmm. um like you you know my tech stack we use GHL. Uh, we got a Twilio integration. Uh, I also use a lot of HubSpot and some other things. Yeah. So what is important to set up? If you're saying that SMS is kind of the way to go, how would you set that up? Yeah. I mean, uh, we both use a very similar tech stack. It's um, a, our systems are built on top of um, Go High Level, right? And the nuance with uh, working with someone like Kevin or myself is that we have a lot of these um, campaigns that are already built in and then tailored to your type of business. So you don't have to build from scratch, right? But uh, effectively, what you're going to need to look for is a way for you to be able to send out marketing SMS, whatever platform that's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. um, a way for you to be able to communicate with them on whatever channel that you're communicating with them. And then also you need to, if you take appointments or walk-ins, you need to make sure that you have some type of a calendar or an appointment-based system to be able to make sure that you're putting them on your calendar and then you're sending out appointment reminders to them as well. It's important, right? So if you have, mm. like say, a Frankenstein approach, you'll need something that does SMS, you'll need something that does appointments, and you'll need some type of integration with your business calendar and a CRM. So then you know that this is happening. Right. Whether you do that with multiple softwares or you work with uh, someone like either your uh, company or my company that does this all in house, it's effectively that's kind of how you want to bake your cake, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. So there, there'd be like essentially building out, it's not one automation. It's right. not like I'm blasting a list. It's mm -hmm. like I'm developing six or seven, you know, I don't know, like make Systems. up the number. Yeah, so that I can speak to somebody in every instance of exactly what happened here. Right. So can your system, your solution, business owner, right, send out text messages, send out voicemail drops if you choose to do that, all the things you're choosing to do, uh, call, right, two-way calling, right, uh, with that phone number, um, CRM to track the people that are basically wherever they are in that path. Um, do you have um, an email marketing tool for you to be able to send and receive email from? Um, are you able to have more than one user on that platform, right? And then be able to track all that. And then also if you so choose, like, do you have a direct mail integration if you're sending out direct mail? Because direct mm -hmm. mail still works, right? Are you doing the local weekly circular? Are you doing, say, um, you know, click to mail from uh, USPS if you're based in the United States? Are you doing, um, like, say, EDDM routes, every door direct mail routes, right? Those things you want to take into consideration because when it comes down to it, and you're spending uh, money and time and resources on marketing and advertising, right? You want to know what's working, what's not. You have to be able to track it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, it's not only like the the offensive part of it, you know, which is how I kind of think about emails, texts, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's also like actually having a way to know, did these people show up? You know, like we can send out these reminders, but if nobody buys anything, okay, it doesn't work. Even if a hundred people reply, if nobody buys, it didn't work, right? So it is a good way to actually, you know, spike results to to work through a system and see which part of it isn't working. But you you definitely need everything tied together with tracking ahead of time to actually know what's a winner and and actually to set goals ahead of time to know did we meet them? Did we not? Do we reinvest here? Do we go deeper? I'll I'll, I'll throw one other one um, out there too for the businesses that have foot traffic in your brick and mortar. Um, if you are providing some sort of free Wi-Fi 
Um, a lot of these newer routers, uh, and this could be even dated by the time we're talking about this, right? But that strategy is you could effectively have them uh, opt in to then receive the Wi-Fi password, okay? Mm-hmm. And why would you want to do that? Again, building your database, right? Mm-hmm. If they want free Wi-Fi from your local establishment and you're offering that as a service there, right? Just uh, as a person. So like if you're a restaurant, you're basically saying, this person has already been in my restaurant. They're already there. You fit, they're physically there. They're a good there. person to come back. Coffee shop, restaurant, anything mm-hmm. that's a brick and mortar that has tra- like foot traffic that they're spending time and you're offering Wi-Fi, right? Mm. Yeah, cause a lot of times I would figure, like, say, airports do that, and I always airports think do. it's it's silly for an airport because you know I go from Tokyo to Atlanta mm-hmm. back to Toronto, right? You know, so like I'm not planning on being in Atlanta again, but they have my information. But if I, I challenge you with this though, right? If you had that information as the airport, and you mm-hmm. were a frequent traveler, and you only wanted to offer. Uh, a special type of an offer or a message to, but you, Kevin, back when you're in that Atlanta mm-hmm. airport again, they without that data, they wouldn't be able to do that. Oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Like the, the thing I love about marketing is like essentially, it's just limited by your creativity, right? You know, it's just like your understanding of why somebody would be here and basically what would appeal to them in that exact time. You know, like in my head, I'm like, I'm never going to be in Atlanta again. However, if they see that I'm there 10 times, well, now I'm a this person, you know, and like now I'm a frequent flyer that gets this and they give me a different offer. And like, hey, maybe I should know about their points reward cards and maybe I should know about season pass at the food court or yeah. you know, whatever the heck it is, right? right absolutely. Mm-hmm. You might not be frequent, but then what about everyone else that goes through that, that airport frequently? Yeah, that's that's interesting to me because it's just an extra, an extra lever, you know, it's an extra layer of knowledge and an extra... Uh, honestly, I can't even compute it right now to tell you. The oh, truth. yeah. I mean, unpack it, right? It's like this. And you think about, say, proximity targeting when you're about to go on stage and give a training. You know yeah. that on Facebook, you can do that radius type of marketing. So yeah. if you had a message out there saying, hey, this is Kevin from Ad Ronin. This, I'm excited to be presenting with you guys in the next couple of hours or the next day. Be on the lookout yeah. for me. Mention this when you see me on stage or after stage and I got a special bonus for you. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, you're we know. Like, like, yeah, we know you're in the area. Right. Uh, if if you've never visited us before, come for a free appetizer or come in for a free whatever that is. Because we also know, right, in the restaurant uh, business, oftentimes where are the money makers? The money makers yeah. are the add-ons, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that that's awesome. Like literally, I won't even have an understanding of that for about six months. I don't think. Mm-hmm. But what I'm taking away from there is definitely, it's like a text first, but at the same time, it's. Like you need everything built in, right? So you, as much as like, if you were going to just choose one, you would go with SMS. You should still have messenger. You should still have email. You should still have every other kind of bell and whistle to just keep connecting with people who've already said they're interested. I challenge the people that have rewards programs, right? Does your vendor for your rewards program uh, give you your list or Mm -hmm. is it theirs? If you don't have it, you can't use it. If you're paying for it, I would highly recommend you ask it for it, right? Still use so, them for what they're doing. I'm not saying mm-hmm. don't do that. Right. But then why why was Groupon so popular at the time? They had the customers, they had the local foot traffic. So if you wanted that, and what is that? It's a glorified way of saying do you have they have the database, right? They have the list. They have oh. the list. So build the list, build your own Groupon. That's the stuff that we can set up for you, for your system working on behalf. Systematize, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, in terms of actionability, step one, build a list. Build a list. Right. Step two, you know, most people already have a list. Maybe they don't actually even know what to do with it. But like if you've been in business for a few years, you already have a list. Mm-hmm. And then two, just set up a system that lets you kind of keep making contact with them, whether it be because of seasonality, where they are located, just a certain time of their buying cycle. You know, that, that gives a lot of actual options. And I bet you you would see your conversion rates actually go through the roof over time. You know? I mean, at, at the very foundation of it, why do we do marketing and advertising, right? It's to drive new business. But then is it new business with new customers or new business with existing customers? If the answer is the latter, meaning existing customers, then you are spending, you're overspending to get them back to, through your door or back to buy your good or service, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Think about that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're paying marketing dollars to find people who've already purchased with you, that that's basically a waste. Uh, and it's a lot to driving the value, like you were saying, right? Like. 
If it's cheaper to do a reach campaign for us. We know that strategically. It's cheaper for us to do a reach campaign with uh, an, an existing a custom audience. It's your own database, right? Mm-hmm. To send a message out there, and then also do the other things we talked about. Than it is to do say a lead generation campaign or a conversion campaign to the same people that are already bought from you. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, just kind of the last thing I'm going to ask before I kind of put this into practice myself. Now you're using GHL because essentially it ties in Twilio, uh, all the different social channels. You might put it out your email. Basically anybody is in there goes into that, that context and conversations field so that you can kind of stay on top of everything. Mm -hmm. Um, can you kind of speak on that, on the importance of just being able to actually like, what I like of that is it does a 360. If you don't have GHL, like what are some alternatives for GHL? There you go. Your tech stack, right? Think about your tech stack. It's, and for the people that haven't heard that term before, it's just, what are you using to make sure that you can actually uh, implement these strategies that we're talking about, right? How can you do SMS and phone calls and voicemail drops? How can you do email marketing? Do you have something that is a, a CRM as well? Um, do you have a system like that? And oftentimes, if you do have a system like that, it's more than likely comprised of multiple softwares or Zapier or something else on the back end that basically can connect all those things. So one of the benefits of uh, building our systems on top of um, something like a, a software company like Goal High Level is um, all it takes all of that entire tech stack consolidates into one place for you and I to be able to actually design the systems on top of that software to get our our customers um, the results that they want, right? So the, and the nuance of working with someone like uh, Kevin or myself is combined. We have over two decades of experience in doing this. We're probably um, have either built out or can build out something that is going to be directly impactful for your business, as opposed to you going out directly, um, looking at a, a, a tool set or software like high level, and then trying to learn um, how to incorporate and build these campaigns out yourself. Right. Yeah, so, and, and what's a real game changer? Sorry to interrupt you there. No, you're it's good. the fact that like, if you get it once, you can just duplicate it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like for me, that's the chat, like the the game changing aspect of GHL, even more so than when I used to use click funnels or different systems. Mm-hmm. It was just the fact that I can duplicate a snapshot and then I'll get all of my automations. I'll get my right. landing pages, my websites, all of that stuff. You know, like once you're niching down, whether you're in, you know, pick your industry doesn't really matter. Everybody is still just trying to connect with new customers. Right. And generally, if you're in a service based industry, you're saying very similar things to try to get people to actually contact you. It's the time saving that like where I see the real benefit and money, the stuff that we're talking about, in addition to what you're saying with the systems, like how else would you be able to do this, right? Leveraging, say, automation before automation, automation was hiring someone else to do it. Are you doing Mm -hmm. the in-house and paying, say, um, our glorified minimum wage here just to get someone through the door? Are they they competent enough to do that? Are they going to stay on top? There's still human error. Mm -hmm. Or are you hiring someone overseas to try to facilitate this for you and represent your brand or your company? Right. There's think about like the 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 value that we bring. You're saving time, you're saving money um, and resources. So then you can allocate them towards the same thing. So ultimately what we're doing is we're providing a, a system as a solution to be able to um really increase your profitability. I always look at at and not to just make this a sermon on GHL, but I look at it, it's like basically like I'm buying an employee, right? Oh, I'm getting an that, employee that works 24 hours a day. There you go. Does it always exactly exactly how I said it? You know, it is garbage in, garbage out. So if you don't have your there system you set up correctly, it's not going to work correctly. But once it is dialed in, like that's the way that I I write it off in my business. I just look at it and say, you know, when it's all said and done, we probably do about a thousand dollars worth of subscriptions a month, um, with GHL and other things kind of comprising the majority of it. But when you compare it to like other kind of industries, other businesses, like, you know, I didn't have to buy a dump truck or a crane or a anything else that costs like a half a million dollars or more. Right. Like you don't have to worry about workers comp and get someone getting sick, asking for a raise, calling in, uh, not showing up, retraining. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. You do have to worry about sending emails to 10,000 people that are, you know, written wrong or filled with spelling mistakes or you mess up their email list. Cause I definitely did that back in the day you know like that that's mm-hmm. kind of like the, the learning curves and truthfully yeah. that's why you work with somebody who's done it before right because they they've seen it they made those mistakes and they're not going to blast your list you're aggregating that that year those years of experience right 
Yeah, essentially. Well, before we uh, kind of finish this one up, Tom, is there anything else that we're kind of just leaving out of the DR conversation? Do it. If you're a business that has a database and you're not actively putting an offer in front of them to get in front of them to talk to them about what you're doing right now or just to do kind of like a warm uh, heat check on your clients. So it's the client retention or new business. If you're not doing that right now, why aren't you? Please let us know. Ask us any questions that you have, however we can help to you to implement this in your business. If you have a database and you're not doing this, why aren't you? Let us help you get that done. And if you don't have a list yet, what's holding you back? Let's talk about it so we can give you some ideas in terms of some list building ideas or systems to put in place so then you can start to actually activate this. Like, And also, if you've had one customer, you have a list. Mm-hmm. You know, like I know I was, I fell victim to it of thinking like, well, I don't have enough people. It's not worth my time. But if I've literally had 10 people that purchased this off of me before and I write 10 people an email about, hey, I got this new thing. Worst thing that happens is 10 people that I already know don't reply, right? Best case scenario or more likely scenario is one or two of them are going to be like, yeah, that seems cool. And you just strike it up. So just because your list doesn't have 10,000 people doesn't mean you don't have a list, right? Just means you have a smaller list or yep. it's also a list of you know big ticket spenders essentially mm-hmm. as an agency that's what you have so get going on that list get it set up make sure to reach out to people you haven't worked with in a while if you have any questions on dr honestly don't message me message tom he can walk you through all of this stuff um excellent he already has the automation set up uh if you're looking for any info uh check out our website you'll find the link in the comments. All right, Tom, thanks a lot for this. Always, brother. On to the next one.